Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for another installment of List Week 2023. We continue our List Week series for the end of the year, and in this video, uh, we are talking about songs. The worst songs of the year, in fact. Worst songs, worst singles, that's what we're doing, making a top 10 out of it. But before we get into the formal top 10, a few honorable mentions. First, shout out to Boy With Uke, a young, viral, up-and-coming singer, songwriter, and producer who earlier this year uh, made a particularly trash piece of music to my exact specifications. And even though it's like not uh, officially, you know, a hit song uh, yet or anything like that, and he's uh, just kind of uploaded it to TikTok as like a, you know, like a weird side musical experiment. He still did do it, and uh, the outcome was quite unlistenable. So shout out to him for, uh, you know, going through the process of that. Our second honorable mention goes to AI singer-songwriter Anna Indiana, whose debut track on Twitter, uh, Betrayed by This Town, was that the title of it? It doesn't matter. It's absolutely awful, uh, sounds painfully generic, and for whatever reason, uh, the AI doesn't even sing that well. It's like clearly out of key at some points. I, I, I don't know how... Uh, <laughs> the machine sucks at being on pitch and also sucks at writing melodies and chords. However, uh, I will stand by my uh, assessment and review of this song earlier this year and say that the lyrics, uh, there's a subtext, like I, th I think a, a communist revolutionary subtext, if you read into it. <laughs> okay. And our third and final honorable mention uh, for the year, worst song of the year has to go to uh, content creator Colleen Ballinger for her 10-minute ukulele non-apology sidestepping the allegations performance song. The toxic gossip train, as it were. Uh, it may not be an official single or tune uploaded to streaming or anything like that, but uh, it definitely was bad. Definitely one of the worst songs that you could have listened to this year. And if you didn't, I envy you. All right, with that, let's get into some officially released songs and singles that uh, were so special they made this list. The first of which is uh, Donald Trump and the Jan 6th Prison Choir with Justice For All, which is like this weird, ambient, semi-experimental uh, music piece where you have a, a group of people, presumably the J6 choir singing the national anthem in spurts and also kind of yelling uh, against the sound of Donald Trump uh, just kind of stating the Pledge of Allegiance. There's some dark ambient synths hanging in the background, uh, some reverb and atmosphere thrown into the mix too. It's uh, not exactly a comfortable or uh, even inspiring listen. All that has happened with the creation of this track uh, is I think Donald Trump and the J6 Choir inadvertently made the sound bed music for uh, the next movie trailer to an upcoming Purge sequel, which will no doubt be our reality in a very short period of time. And speaking of reality, uh, the band Fallout Boy, in their own way, tried to reflect reality in our number nine spot with their cover of We Didn't Start the Fire, which I don't usually reserve a whole lot of spots in these lists for cover songs, but uh, they did generate their own lyrics for their version of the track, so I figure yeah, that's enough. If you're familiar with the original Billy Joel version of the track, you know that uh, uh, that that song was very much a product of its time as Billy loaded the track with a ton of cultural references, uh, both uh, entertaining and also unnerving. And I think Fall Out Boy tried to do the same uh, for the modern era, but fell completely flat on their faces, not only by missing gigantic elephants in the room such as the pandemic, but also not even really sticking to the time span of cultural references that they set out for themselves. Themselves, uh, by mentioning Metroid, which was a product of the late 80s, uh, and also rhyming that with George Floyd, which is maybe the tackiest and most tasteless thing they could have possibly done. But uh, yeah, needless to say, Fall Out Boy really screwed the pooch on this cover and just kind of exposed themselves as having a lack of tact and maybe also being a bit too out of touch to pull off a song like this. Speaking of out of touch, uh, number eight, 
We have Kodak Black with No Love for a Thug, and on this track, Kodak sounds completely out of touch with reality over an utterly boring and soft instrumental, uh, sounding zonked out, trying to make the case for, uh, you know, th there being some love for a thug, how he's kind of sad and lonely and isolated and uh, dislikes his own fame but still can't say no to the paper. It's his personal experience, perspective, and story, and yet he couldn't possibly sound more checked out of it. I mean, the man sounds bored by the very topic that he is singing about himself, and by virtue of that, how am I or anybody else supposed to be sold on it? Totally passionless and dull in the truest sense of the word. Dull also is our number seven track, even though it is uh, very much trying not to be. That would be the Grimes and Elangelo track, I Want to Be Software, which again is dull and boring and lacking in imagination, uh, despite the fact that it is very clearly convinced of its own quirky genius. Cause tee hee, I don't want to be human, I want to be post-human, I want to be software, upload me to the cloud dog. Doesn't that make me so cool and, and weird and not like uh, the other humans? Being a human is lame, man. I just want to be a computer. Beep, beep, boop, boop. The further we get away from visions or art angels era grimes, I feel like the, the more on the nose the songwriting and the lyricism becomes, the blander and more uninteresting the production and song structures get, and this track over here is just more proof of that, unfortunately, as not only is it a super rudimentary and basic song, but the ideas and desires the track is trying to put across uh, just feel so infantile and silly, like in the same way that uh, when you ask a kid what they want to be when they grow up, they say, I don't know, a dinosaur. And to be clear, I'm not against art that explores themes of post-humanism. I just think Grimes' portrayal of it on tracks like this and uh, on the Miss Anthropocene record, for example, uh, just sounds uh, cheap. The track we have at number six is pretty cheap as well. Uh, that would be Megan Trainer's Mother. Yep, Megan Trainer manages to be annoying once again <laughs> with her trademark combination of ultra-modern, ultra-basic, Ultra simple, ultra plain production uh, with bits of instrumentation and vocal harmonies that feel like something lifted out of a, a 50s or 60s vocal pop track, a girl group track, something like that. It's a tacky combination. It's been a tacky combination, and she can't stop doing it. While simultaneously appropriating queer culture with this whole mother tagline thing that like, Nobody calls you that. This is so silly, she might as well come out with a track titled uh, Boots the House Down. Not to mention her lyrics once again read like very surface level BuzzFeed white feminism that isn't even capable of reaching a level of self-awareness on par with something like the Barbie movie, for example. But what lacks even more self-awareness is the track in our number five spot. That would be Forgiato Blow with a Boycott Target. Which, how is that Target boycott going? Is, is, is the company uh, under yet? Has their stock price gone to the toilet? I don't know if the Target boycott is uh, going too good over the company displaying some goods in terms of like knickknacks and clothes uh, with like LGBTQ symbols and sayings and so on and so forth. This past year that has been enough to uh, raise the ire of some psychotic conservatives out there. And uh, Mr. Forgi Auto Blow, if you're unfamiliar with the man is nothing if not a psychotic conservative with his many patriotic face tattoos and <laughs> just just strange everything strange everything and in the midst of all of the uh, target lgbtq hubbub he has come out with this track about how a uh, target is <laughs> targeting your kids. You're not gonna get away with all this LGBTQ agenda. Eh. Yeah, it's an absolutely psychotic, delusional trap song fueled by blind fascist patriotism and uh, rabid paranoia. But yeah, there's nothing worse than a shittily made song about somebody else's uh, psychotic delusions, but wait, what are you gonna do? I mean, that's also what's happening at our number four spot here, uh, but it's even less listenable. That would be Oliver Anthony with Rich Men North of Richmond. Oliver Anthony's pretty scared of the state of the world too, I guess. But rather than sing about it over a trap beat, he's gonna hoot and holler about it uh, on top of an acoustic guitar. A rich man not the rich man dear. And look, I've been pretty critical of this track at several times uh, th 
throughout this year. There have been a lot of people in my comments that have come to Oliver's defense in terms of what the song is supposed to be about, like, oh man, he's just taking shot at DC politicians. But regardless of Oliver's intentions, uh, a lot of information has come out since the release of this track uh, showing that uh, its popularity was pretty much astroturfed by the right wing. And again, regardless of the song's meaning, it has become uh, this odd conservative rallying cry, partially I'm sure because of who Oliver Anthony is and the uh, kind of image and vibe and persona he puts forward, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with enjoying artists who you seemingly culturally align with. My main gripes with the song is that despite the fact that it is trying to put a social and political message forward, the problems it's highlighting and the sources of those problems uh, aren't really terribly specific. Outside of it being like rich men north of Richmond, but what about rich men south of Richmond or all over the country? If your gripe is with the rich and the powerful and the social and economic inequity they create, uh, what does it matter what location they come from? But the thing is, I don't think Oliver cares about whether or not somebody is rich as long as politically they are on his side, which is why he was fine in the first place with uh, people who are right wing who have money uh, supporting and promoting his song. And there's also the infamous lyrical shot uh, in the song at people who are on welfare and eating fudge rounds who are fat and lazy. Ugh. But yeah, overall, real song for weirdos in my opinion and one of the worst of the year. And even more for weirdos uh, would be... <laughs> The song at number three, uh, the falling in reverse track, what Watch the World Burn, is, is that what it's, it's called? I don't care. Yeah, Ronnie Radke's band, uh, Ronnie Radke. If, do you know who that is? If you don't, I envy you. Don't look it up. Just know that Ronnie is a singer and a songwriter. He fronts a band called Falling in Reverse. He has decided to really make a, a big return to music in the past year or so. This track over here was a part of that explosive reintroduction. And what a way to reacclimate with a crappy, anthemic, power, new metal anthem with these speedily wrapped, fast, uh, hip-hop metal bits that sound corny and annoying as hell. And also show Ronnie just like being totally up his own ass in terms of his own fame, popularity, influence, ooh, the dirt that he has, he's gonna do an expose. Meanwhile, like, nobody in the music industry has more dirt on them and more skeletons in their closet than Ronnie Radke. Yeah, it's tacky, it's annoying, it's obnoxious, it's projection, it's sad, it's tasteless, and honestly, I wish I had never heard this track because me shitting on this song way earlier in the year uh, somehow put me on Ronnie Radke's radar, and now the fucker is obsessed with me <laughs> and won't stop thinking about me or tweeting about me or apparently dressing up as me for Halloween, so... Yeah, this, this song sucks. But what sucks even more is uh, this track at number two over here, TX2, uh, I Would Hate Me Too, which is just basically like a, a shitty hard rock song with uh, this pop punk affectation uh, that's basically reveling in how much of a dick this guy is. I got a bad attitude and I'm a fucking jerk and I'm a loser and I'll stab you in the back and I'm an asshole and I'm a dick and everybody hates me and I destroy every relationship I've ever had and I'm the worst thing to ever happen. Who cares? Who cares? Loads of people on the planet are assholes. Loads, lo countless amounts of, of people, assholes. Doesn't make you special or interesting. Just absolutely not special whatsoever. If you were nice, that would make you special and interesting. Wait, wait, why does being a total and utter jerk make you interesting? Who cares? Finally, at number one, who cares about the <laughs> scared just pee peeing in his pants, Mr. Jason Aldean, with his new song, Try That in a Small Town. It is Jason Aldean, right? It's Jason Aldean? I mean, who cares what this D-Bag's name is? Because, uh, in my opinion, he dropped the shittiest song of the year. Which is this pumped up, uh, totally over the top, gross, country rock song that is based on this uh, just sick, sad fantasy of like, yeah, 
all this crime, all this violent crime that's going on all the time around us, especially in these big cities. Yeah, try that in a small town. See how far it gets you. Yeah, me and these good old boys will take care of you. Try that in a small town. Which, like, for anybody who has ever lived in or been to or <laughs> exists within the vicinity of uh, a city or an urban area or whatever, like you you know that as you walk down the street, it's not just crazy rampant crime going on in every direction. It's not just endless mayhem and you can't even take in or process all of it. It's not a war zone. So like the whole vision that has inspired Jason Aldean's shitty ass song here is just a lie to begin with. And because it's a lie, there's really no reason to threaten these imaginary, just random, violent, in-the-street criminals uh, to uh, come and try that in your shitty-ass small town that nobody wants to go to anyway. I just want to be spared. I just want to be spared shit like this. That's all I want. Really, truly, honestly. Society did not request this perfect distillation of conservative brain rot that, again, just like the 4G auto blow track earlier, uh, the, the scariest thing in the world, the craziest thing in the world is just some shit you made up in your head. But yep, that's it. More song of the year. Try that in a small town. And I'm gonna leave it there. Yep, top 10 more songs of the year. Those are them. Those are the songs. You're the best. I will see you guys in the next one. Anthony Fantano, 2023. We're songs forever.